Pagancha pulling out all the stops to drop Jonas Vingegaard today. Uphill, downhill, you name it. This was stage 16, the first stage after the last and second rest day from Carcassonne to Foix. It's not a proper high mountain stage, but we had two decent climbs today, including the Meur de Bagur, or so-called Bagur climb, which has 3.6 kilometers at about 11% at the end of it before a pretty shallow 27k descent to Foix. So you'd need teammates at the road if you wanted to maintain a difference. If you did make it over that sort of 13, 15 minute climb, we had Jonas in the leader's jersey still about 222 ahead of Pagacha with that final TT. But the expected break went except for Wout van Aert being in it. Wout van Aert was in there with another teammate, Nathan van Hooydonk, as well as Vlasov with a teammate, Groschartner. And so Jumbo Visma were content to have Laporte, Benoit, and Koos just for company with Vingegaard on the flat sort of 80K run-in. Could Pogaccia take advantage of it? Well, he was beset by bad luck to Mark Soler outside the time limit after having a bad day. And so Laporte and Benoit just maintained the gap to this break at about eight minutes before the first climb, where Caruso, just like in his Vuelta stage win last year on the Porto Lair, he went early but dropping Legac, but he wasn't on his best legs, not the same as last year with Wout van Aert, just monitoring the other satellite riders in that breakaway, McNulty, Danny Martinez for Ineos. And I was like, are Arkea trying something on this climb? The answer was no. It was actually just Ineos and Arkea jostling for position, position to the base. And Benoit pacing again with not too many people dropping off his pace. And you see here, Wout van Aert, he's just monitoring UAE and Ineos. He can't let those guys go ahead of him in this breakaway, and he watched Vlasov as well on this first climb, which kind of suits him. It's shallow gradient. Whilst Wood and Stora join up with Caruso, they'd be caught before the top. Still Benoit pacing. Ineos are down to almost two riders when Movistar launch a team attack with Mulberg and Verona. No reaction from Jumbo Visma. Gershka goes over the top with Wout van Aert, and Enric Maas has to leave Verona behind, and he's starting this long-range move whereas Vlasov got in the break earlier before Pogaccia attacks. The group was still pretty big. Uh, is this is more him trying to catch Vingegaard by surprise. Like, he didn't have McNulty that close to him up the road, so uh, he knows this isn't going to stick at this point. They haven't gone hard enough before this point in the race, and then Micah goes forward, and Pogaccia is going to attack again on the Port de Lair. And it's not that steep a climb, and yeah, as I said, the pacing hadn't been huge. It was Roman Bardet who was really caught out by this attack. I think he showed his hand that he wasn't on a good day. Garou counted and maybe Ineos and Grant Thomas showed his hand that he's fighting for the podium, not the overall win, closing down that Garou move. And even though they didn't have that many teammates and Christ like and Roglic are out, once Koo starts pacing for Jonas, that's all the help he needs. And with Nathan Van Hooydonk waiting just over the top of this descent, who'd been in that early break, Jonas is, well, I mean, maybe a hairy moment here and there trying to follow Pagacha on the descent. As I said, Pagacha pulling out all the stops like he has to gain at least a minute 30 before the final TT. So uphill, descent attacks, trying to put Vingegaard under pressure. And we see here Van Hoydonk, who was sort of caught by surprise uh, when he was waiting up ahead. He comes back and he's, you know, 80 kilo plus ruler, starts pacing for Jonas Vingegaard into the last climb where... I don't know, the steep gradients kind of suit Jonas. Hugo Ull attacks Fuga de la Fuga from the break. And we see here, Vlasov's riding for GC. Van Aert, McNulty, and Martinez are satellite riders. And Woods has got a teammate up the road. So there's a limited amount of riders who actually want to chase this back. And so Ull gets a nice 35-second handy gap before the Pagur starts. And he's good on the shallow gradients. Maas is caught. That move didn't work on the ascent. He's not a great descender. Van Hoydonk's pacing before Maas puts his loyal domestiques on the front again to pace, but he lose a lot of time today. But it was this steep part that was the problem for Ull, where Stora had the advantage or Jorgensen or Caruso, but Woods there, it just seemed to demotivate the chase. Whilst the gap came down from 46 to 30 to almost 25 over the top to Jorgensen, he was able, I think he was still held it over the top of the descent Anyway, I mean, Jorgensen, he was looking pretty good. He had Woods on the wheel, but unfortunately for the American, he crashed in a tight left-hand corner, and that meant Ugo Israel Premier Tech were sure to take the victory today. Really good tactics from them using Ul in this way before the final climb and having Woods, who's good on the steep stuff, wait, and an emotional victory for Ugo Ul, who dedicated the win to his late 
rather. But back in the GC group, we saw Micah moving up the minute they hit the base of this steep part of the climb. Micah moves up and his first minute surge is really, really strong. Almost too strong, in fact. It immediately gaps pretty much everyone except Quintana, Jonas, Kuz and his teammate Pogaccia. Yates and Thomas are off the back, but he slows down. A lot. Even before he has a mechanical issue, Thomas and Yates and Godu come back. Bardet, he wouldn't. He'd lose a lot of time today. And then he snaps his chain, but he'd already been kind of steady pacing. And then Vingegaard says to Koos, he says, get on the front, hurry up. And immediately Yates and Thomas go out the back door again. And we saw, like on Grenon, when Pogaccia feels good, he attacks. And when he didn't feel good in this Tour de France, he had Micah set a pace. In fact, the pace was too hard on Grenon. And here I wonder with the satellite riders wading up the road, McNulty, then Van Aert, and Pogaccia taking a bid on with water and not dispensing with it, so he might, maybe he's dehydrated despite the steep gradient. Could Vingegaard have tested him on the climb and dropped him? I think so, but Martinez waits for Thomas. He brings him back, and then Wout Van Aert's waiting on the other side, and they catch up with McNulty too. So all the satellites are caught. It didn't seem to make too much of a difference, and they all roll home together with Bardet, the main loser on GC of the day. His chances of the podium gone, but Ugo Uhl was the big winner and Israel Premier Tech. They've got the Canadian 1-3 in the stage with Woods hanging on for third as well. Jorgensen going fourth and Stora Vlasov who moves up loads of oh, three places from 11th to 8th on GC turns. Geshka, Bergado, Caruso. Geshka will be in the break again. Same with Palace. They're going for KOM. Here's what the white jersey Pogaccia had to say after the stage. Yeah, I tried but um, today didn't play, uh, work out. So two more chances. I feel good. But uh, yeah, today in the final climb would not make no sense because there was a uh, push really strong and one art in the front so I wouldn't make any different on the downhill so yeah um, it was a hard day but uh, I'm looking forward to, for the next two days for you it's also a question of patience right? hitting 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 and maybe maybe making a difference in the days to come yeah I think tomorrow there's a lot of chances to to hit and uh, yeah I think uh, it's gonna be be interesting one tomorrow and uh, next day. And you can count on Rafael Maika who, who, who's flying as well. Yeah, I can count on him, but today uh, he had a mechanical, he broke a chain in the uh, middle of a climb, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, and I hope that uh, Mark Soler come to the finish, but uh, yeah, we see. We will fight with everything we have. Do you feel that Jonas Vingegaard is suffering? <laughs> Yeah, probably. Thank you. So no changes to the top three on GC, although Thomas' position on the podium is a lot safer with Bardet falling out and he's got a 90-second gap to Quintana, who he's got a much better TT than, but still 2.22 between Jonas and Pogaccia. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you with the recap of that tomorrow. Ciao.